Hi you guys, welcome back. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Faith and I'm a gardener here in North Florida in Zone 8B. And as we are nearing the new gardening season and spring and maybe some of you out there are thinking about getting chickens for the first time and I know that was something I dreamed about for a very long time so I wanted to share my top 10 things that I wish I had known before I got these sweet little chickens so first kind of tip and thing that I wish I knew number one is do not get fooled by your $2 chickens. When I was dreaming of chickens for a really, really long time and I saw chickens for little baby chicks for about $2 in my local tractor supply, I thought, wow, what a steal. The thing that I did not think about and did not prepare myself for was the chicken coop, the chicken run, how much protection and I would provide them and how long and how much that would take to get all of that set up and how costly that portion of owning chickens can be. So I thought that I wasn't gonna be investing that much money or time because I saw these cute, cheap little chickens, but really make sure that you are trying to get all of those things set up before you get the chickens. I did buy myself a little bit of time because I raised them in the brooder and so I just hustled through that time before they were reached the age to where they can get moved into the coop. But it really is best to go ahead and have all your infrastructure and protection for their chickens set up before you buy your chickens. So tip number two is how do you want to love your chickens? So generally I have found there are two ways that people like to love on their chickens. One way is that people choose to let their chickens free range. They feel that this offers them the best life possible and even though they could be at risk of predators, they feel like giving them the best life is letting them free range and at the risk that they may end up getting attacked by some sort of predator or something like that but they feel like that gives them the best diet and the best nutrition and the best life possible. The other way that people tend to love on their chickens is by giving them a fully protected place to live, even though they may not get as much space to free range or as much space to roam around as they would like. And that is, tends to be the way that I choose to love on my chickens, but no matter which way you choose, that choice is up to you. I have just found that where I am located, I had um, a dog attack my chickens one day. I've had owls and hawks come from above and attack my chickens. So I have kind of a roll net that I can sometimes roll out over my chicken coop. And so I have just found that for me, I have loved my chickens. These are the first chickens I ever owned. I've had them for several years now and I don't want to risk losing them. I've already grown super attached. So for me, I have found that the best life that I would like to give is to buy protecting them. So I have build them a nice run. I have dug hardware cloth underneath the run and around the coop so that no digging animals can get in. And I also have a net that I can roll out once I start seeing um, predators from above. So it all depends on how you choose to love them and how you choose to care for your chickens. And it is entirely up to you and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Every now and then I do like to do supervised free range where I can watch my chickens when I know that I'm out here with them. So sometimes maybe if I get home from work, I can let them out and let them free range then when I know that I am here to watch them and make sure that nothing happens. So that is an option too. So as you can see, I have this nice long run that I've built for them. I have a net that runs across the top that I can roll out. I especially do this when I have young baby chicks. Um, and then I also have buried underneath all of this hardware cloth that is buried underneath, which is this, this is hardware cloth, um, so that no digging predators can get in. It is much safer and stronger than chicken wire. Predators can dig through and get through chicken wire. So I always recommend using hardware cloth. So that brings me to point number three, which is that chicken wire is not the most protective and that you need hardware cloth if you really want to make sure that your chickens are protected. I can't tell you how many new chicken owners I've seen who have used chicken wire in trying to protect in the building of their coop or their run. And the thing is predators and digging predators and they can get through that chicken wire. So the best thing to use is hardware cloth and I really suggest using that and burying it all around your run or your coop so that nothing can dig under and using that instead of chicken wire. 
So the fourth thing I wish I knew because it relates to free range is that I wish I knew my chickens would eat my entire garden. Before I got chickens, I used to see pictures online of chickens clucking around the garden and it just looks so cute and whimsical and I was, I could not wait until I could do that and have chickens. And I did try that for a little while until they started eating everything that I had and realized that mm, this tastes good and it's food. So I put nets over everything and I could just not keep them out of the garden. And this was before I had built the run. And so I just realized that chickens will eat pretty much anything that you grow. Um, so just keep that in mind when you get your chickens that you either need to have a fence around your garden if you're choosing to free range or you can keep a run for them. It just depends on your style of owning your chickens. However, on the flip side of that, anything that doesn't actually make it inside and into the house for my cooking is great scraps and food for my chickens. I love to give them um, greens of things, even though like say, for instance, broccoli greens are completely edible. I can cook them in my house. I have plenty of kale and mustard and other greens and cabbage stuff that I tend to cook and use inside. So I love to give those broccoli greens to my chickens who will love them and get lots of nutrition out of that as well. The fifth thing I wish I knew, and I know this may sound silly, but get used to a lot of poop. I mean, a lot of poop. <laughs> Chickens require so much maintenance and keep up, just like any other animal, I'm sure you are aware but they have a lot of poop that gets in kind of their roosting area, a lot of poop in their coop. Um, sometimes you can end up with poopy eggs if they're not roosting in the right place. Um, so just always there is a lot of cleaning water, cleaning, making sure there's no poop that accidentally got into their water or their food or, you know, it takes a lot of cleanup and just, just prepare yourself for a lot of poop basically. <laughs> For example, oh, someone's in here right now. This is, I used to put wood chips in here, but I just found it was getting even messier and poop everywhere. Now I just, this is where they roost at night. Um, I just keep it empty and I take it and dump all the poop out and spray it down and just put it back in. And I have found that to be much, much easier for me because as you can see, they love to get in here and just dig around. So this is often filled with a lot of poop. Sometimes they get poop in their nesting boxes, especially if they are sleeping them. Which brings me to my next point, is that where they roost and sleep at night needs to be in the highest place, and especially above their nest boxes. Because if the roost is not above their nest boxes, they're going to sleep in their nest box, which means poopy eggs, poopy nest box, it is just, it's a mess. So always make sure, especially if you're building your own coop, that where they get to roost is higher than the nest box because chickens are prey animal and they are prey to a lot of different animals. They like to sleep as high as possible because that is where they feel most safe. One thing I have found that can discourage because my roosts are not that far above um, the nest boxes is that if you find that you are having an issue where they are sleeping and you're getting really poopy, no ma'am, um, poopy nest boxes. Sometimes you can kind of block them off for a week or so with something to keep them from sleeping in there and they will kind of eliminate and get them used to sleeping back. You just have to come out and maybe put these in at night. I'm leaving one open so they can lay eggs. Um, they tend to all lay in the same nest box anyway. Um, and then I can remove it once I kind of broken the habit. If you have been preparing for chickens, you may know this one already, but it is surprising how many people don't know this and how disconnected we are from food and where our food come from. But I've lost track of which number I'm on. But the next one is you don't have to have a rooster to get eggs. The hens will still lay eggs regardless of whether there's a rooster or not. You only really need a rooster if you want fertilized eggs to have baby chicks down the line. They're also really good for protecting the hens and keeping an eye out for predators, but they can also be kind of aggressive, especially if you have young chickens who are coming into your, dealing with your coop or things like that. So I have personally chose not to have a rooster here. It's not something I want. It's, I don't really need fertilized eggs. I don't want that many chickens. Um, so that is something to keep in mind that you don't necessarily have to have a rooster to get eggs. You will get eggs regardless. And it is surprising how many people don't know that. 
So that brings me to my next point, which is that you may not need as many chickens as you really think you do because a chicken can lay a lot of eggs, especially when they're young and they're fairly new chickens. They produce really, really well, typically, when it's the right time of year. So when my chickens are in full production, they each lay about an egg a day. So I only have three because it's just my boyfriend and I, I don't really need that many eggs. And so I end up getting three eggs a day, which is 21 eggs a week, which even if I ate eggs every day, which I certainly don't, I just end up having a lot of eggs. So it's always great to give some to my neighbors, to family and friends, coworkers that I have and things like that. So there's definitely ways to use them, but just keep in mind that you will get a lot of eggs. So just make sure you prepare yourself with all your favorite egg recipes when you get chickens because you're gonna need them. And I will say that if you are getting a small amount of chickens, make sure that you get enough. Chickens are flock animals and they do like to have a flock and friends and that is just how they feel best. So make sure you're not getting just like one or two chickens. You may wanna get a little bit more than one or two. I ended up with three, although I originally wanted four, but just something to keep in mind. So I'm in my shed where I keep my chicken supplies. And the next tip to get it out is that do not use these lights when you brood your own chickens. If you're brooding your own baby chicks and you're growing them and keeping them in a brooder, this is my old brooder, do not use these cheap lights. They sell them typically when you find your baby chicks, but these actually have been known to cause so many fires. I really suggest um, using some sort of like the hot plates where the chickens can crawl underneath. I forget the name of them right now, but I'll make sure to link one down below. But do not, do not, do not, do not use these cheap lights. There are just so many incidences of these causing fires in homes and busting. So just be aware of that. And last, but certainly not least, Make sure you handle and pick up your chickens often, especially as they're babies and they're getting used to you. And make sure that you introduce them to, especially if you have dogs that are gonna be out and um, hanging out with your chickens. I'm in my run with right now. You can see my dog is hanging out with me and not even paying a lick of sense to my chickens. Although she does like to be their friend sometimes. But when I first got chickens, I had them brooded in the house and I introduced them as baby chicks to my dogs while they were young and slowly let them grow up and be introduced to them and trained my dogs in the process to leave those baby chicks alone and to not mess with the chickens. So although she's walking over there right now, she likes to be friends with them um, and thinks that they're friends, she doesn't attack them and try to eat them. I have known people in the past who their dogs are actually the main predators that have attacked and eaten their chickens. So make sure that you handle them so that they get used to you picking them up and that you get them around your dogs and things like that so that you just kind of naturally progress that. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that when you do get your chickens, you love them as much as I do. They are so much fun and they really are great pets and give you lots of wonderful eggs and really not that difficult to keep if even though I know I was really nervous when I first got chickens that I would kill them or do something wrong. But if you do a lot of research and make sure that you take care of them the best you can, they are wonderful to have and not that difficult. Um, so I really hope this helps you um, and some things to keep in mind and maybe research further into and I will see you all soon. Say bye bye. <laughs>